This solo queue castle strat wins me 90% of my ranked games. In this video, I'll be showing you 15 total solo queue strats that you can use in your ranked games. The first of which is going to be the castle strat that I just showed you. This solo queue strat is so that you can hold gym and master. Before we go over the actual castle barricades, I'm going to show you the rotates and feet holes for sight. First, you want to rotate on the right side of the gym wall here. Having a short rotate like this ensures that you can't be shot from these two windows. Then, you'll put feet holes all along the exact same wall. Then what you'll do is you'll reinforce the wall in between the rotate and those feet holes. This reinforcement right here ensures that if anybody tries to get on the gym window right there, they can't get a long angle into your next rotate, which is going to be the logi rotate on this wall. As you can see, the reinforcement completely covers the window. Once you've made that rotate, make sure that you have a rotate for bathroom on the right side of this wall right here, and make sure that it is vaultable. The reason that you make this vaultable is so that if an attacker runs in here, they have to waste a lot of time, get locked into an animation, and not be able to move or aim as well because they're vaulting, and it gives you an audio cue so that you can swing and kill them a little bit easier. In terms of rotates, the last one on site, or at least near site for that matter, is going to go on this construction wall into Logi. You make it vaultable right here for the exact same reason as the last one. People will open up this rotate and walk in, so make it vaultable so they can't just as easily do that. But hopefully you don't have to do all of that site setup, because you still have to set up the other side of the map with your shotgun and with your castle barricades, so make sure you got like a mirror or somebody else with a shotgun to do a little bit of that for you. Because the first part of your strat is opening up head holes just just right here. You never want to reinforce this wall. The reason you put head holes here is because you're actually going to be playing inside of cache. These head holes will allow you to see all three windows, so if they want to hop into site or into construction, you'll have a long angle that can prevent them from doing so. Now the final rotate that you'll be doing is the one on this cache wall right here. Some people like to reinforce the triple wall right here as well as the dual wall right here, but if you reinforce that logi wall instead, it makes it to where you don't have enough reinforcements to actually do this. So we're not going to do that. We're going to put a rotate here and leave these two walls soft. Because a huge part of this strat is playing top red stairs. To make sure you don't get flanked from bottom red, you'll put a proximity alarm right here. One huge issue though is attackers love to push rafters, so you can easily castle off this window so they can't contest you whenever they try to push into CC. Another way they push into CC is through these two walls, so instead of wasting two reinforcements on that wall, waste two on this wall instead. Not only does having these two walls and this castle barricade make it a lot harder for them to flush you out of this side of the map, but it also makes it way safer for you to get on this window a little bit earlier in the round and shoot people who are on the windows to sight. It's very, very useful. People like castle barricading this door, but I find that it makes it really hard for you to be able to do what I just said unless you have a rotate right there, so I don't like doing that. Another main reason people like castling this is because it makes it to where if they get on this wall, they can't get an angle into cash. But instead of castling this to do that, all you have to do is reinforce this wall. Now, you can use this door freely, and you have a rotate for a secondary rotate option, but you still get all of the same protectiveness that you'd need from anybody in rafters. Now, the final two reinforcements that are necessary are the two walls right here. These two walls being reinforced makes it to where if they end up- Oh, I fucking did that wrong. Now the next and final reinforcement that you're actually going to need for this site setup is the one on the right side of this cache wall. Now you might be wondering, do you reinforce the one on the left? Oh, I f- no, and I'll tell you why. You're actually going to put head holes right here instead. This is pretty dangerous to do, but the entire point of this solo queue strat is an aggressive castle hold, not a passive one where you just sit behind reinforcements. Now, the reason you still reinforce this wall is because if they ace this open, which is pretty default nowadays, they won't be able to get an angle onto you whenever you're inside of cache. But if they choose to actually rotate into CC from the wall, you'll still be able to get a tight angle onto them through these head holes, or optionally, these head holes as well, which makes it really, really easy for you to hold this down if you're an aggressive of player and you know how to hold angles, which is even easier to do now that Castle is getting ACOG in year 9. But hopefully you don't have to reinforce all of these walls and make all of these rotates because you have teammates that know how to set up the site pretty default like. So where you're going to be putting your castles, first of all, is the window that I just showed you earlier. The second castle is going to go on this window here. The third castle is going to go on this window here. And then the fourth castle is optional. You can either put it on this window, which is 
pretty much what a lot of people do in solo queue. I wouldn't blame you. Or if you know that you have somebody trying to turbo route trick, bandit trick, K trick, this wall here, whatever it may be, you can put a castle barricade on this door instead because this castle barricade will protect your tricker from anybody on this wall trying to shoot them. So it's all dependent on what your team is doing really. But let's say you'll do what you'll do probably nine times out of 10, which is just castling off this door. Then your final proximity alarm will go under this window. Again, the reason you have a proximity alarm under this window is so that you can sit all the way inside of cash and watch anybody who's hopping in this window for the plant. And because the reinforcement starts pretty late, like it's, it's, it's super far on the right, if they hop in, you can still wallbang them for a good amount of time before they have cover behind that reinforcement. So like, it's still a pretty good strategy that you can use, and it's aggressive enough to allow you to actually still maintain control of CC for long enough to get that angle that we were talking about earlier. So overall, it's a great solo queue strat, as long as your teammates know how to set up the site pretty default, and you don't have to reinforce five things and make all these different rotates and feet holes. A strat that doesn't rely on your teammates as much, though, is this buck strat for attacking the basement. Now, as Buck, you'll be spawned in main gate because you're going to try to attack the basement site. And to do this, your first point of entry is going to be the main double door right here. Once you've opened this up, you should still have a prep phase drone somewhere in lounge or inside of stock. You really just want a drone here to watch your flank because primarily you're gonna take a left and play inside of bar. Now, assuming that you have the default Hibana Ram strat going on on kitchen or just at least somebody playing a hard breach for kitchen, that part should be clear enough to where you can walk into bar after droning yourself in to hold main stairs, to clear bottom main stairs, maybe clear bathroom, do what you need to do. But spend the first 30 seconds to a minute just clearing out this side of the map and holding your flank drone to make sure there's no over aggressive defenders. Once you've ensured that this is not the case, and your Habana has started working the hatch, then pull out your hard breaching charges because your main job is going to be getting open this hatch right here. Once you have this hatch open, it forces a lot of players to get out of this short hallway right here, which makes it a lot easier for your teammates to push down main and it makes it a lot safer for you to start making vert onto this hallway right here. Because if they're in that hallway and you start making vert, they can shoot you through your own vert and you don't want that to happen. So make sure you open the hatch first if possible, and if not, start making vert all along this hallway right here. Making vert in this hallway gives you a lot of different angles that you can utilize to kill defenders. You can see the typical rotate that's here. You can see anybody in the hallway for that matter. You can see anybody in short hall, in moto. If you get on this side, you can see anybody on this doorway over here. It's pretty nice. But because you're playing buck, you can also open up these stage walls right here and these bar walls right here as well to get even longer angles. You can even open up the wall once you're here and get angles onto anyone in armory. You can open up what's typically on a rotate right here and get angles into armory again. Now, you want to be sparing because as you see, I just ran out of buck ammo, but because you're playing Hibana and typically Ram is default on this site too, you won't need that much vert. And when this hatch is open, all of that vert and all of this vert will be plenty enough. And worst comes to worst, you can just shoot out a little floor hole here and use that for vert too. So like you have your options with buck. It's a great idea. But once you've been playing vert for long enough, you're going to do the default pro league take, which is rotate. Oh fuck. Hold on. <laughs> Hello? which is rotating to the blue stairs. Now, again, you want to do this late into the round because most people won't expect it, but get your hard breaching charge out if you haven't used both already and get open this hatch. Once this hatch is open, it allows you to get a little bit of utility and a little bit of information when you throw your drone down so that you can push down generator. I don't really recommend you drop the hatch because if you do, you'll be exposed to anybody in dirt or on the AK rack. So just use this as like an information spot and to kind of scare the person in generator so that you can walk down the staircase and eventually take back sight really, really late into the round to kill anybody in armory who isn't suspecting it. It's a great strat that a lot of people use that you should start using in your ranked games. An even better strat though, is this mute setup for holding geisha. To do this, obviously you need to be in geisha. You'll reinforce the middle geisha wall right here. Having this reinforce will allow you to play inside of Geisha without worrying about the window shooting you through this wall. Then, you'll reinforce the actual outer Geisha wall so they can't get on the balcony and open it for free. You'll also want to put a mute jammer on this wall as well to make sure that they really can't ace it open or hard breach it. Once that's done, I recommend putting some feet holes right here. So that way, if you want to rotate out, let's say maybe down this hatch or through the staircase, you can hold an angle from drum onto anybody trying to hop in through the wall or through the window from the feet holes. Your next reinforcement is going to go on the left side of this geisha wall here with a head hole right next to it. This will make it to where you can't really get shot from anybody in the hallway because you'll be behind this reinforcement here. But if you want to peek and still shoot them, you can. 
Also, it's pretty common to have head holes on this side of the T wall, so you can use this hole and tan them with those holes to actually deny anybody from walking into the site through this doorway. Finally, make sure that you have a rotate actually outside of Geisha into karaoke so that you can leave if they're starting to pressure you with yings, flashes, drones, whatever it may be, with a reinforcement on the left side right here so they can't get a huge angle onto anybody inside of karaoke. In terms of actual mute jammer placements, obviously the first one's going to go on that wall. The second one, however, is going to go on the left side of this door. You don't want to put it on the right side, otherwise they can shoot it from this window. This will make it to where if they want to drone you out from the brown staircase or drum, whatever it may be, they can't. Now, if you have nobody doing wall denial on these two T walls, you should put your third mute jammer here, and then you should put your fourth mute jammer on this door. It just makes it a lot easier for your karaoke player. Now, if you do have something electrifying these walls, or maybe you have an extra mute jammer left over from somewhere else, I actually recommend putting the mute jammer on this first reinforced wall right here. That way they can't ace it open from the window, which actually does happen a little bit. But once you're here, you can play Geisha for as long as possible. Then back up to behind this box once they get this wall open, so you can throw a C4, you know, over this little box onto the window, right about like there, I'd say. A uh, little bit higher, but you get the idea. You can throw a nitro there for pretty much free, and then if they even hop in the window, you have a shotgun that one pumps from this distance, so it's very easy to get value out of this strategy. An even easier strat, though, is this mirror strat for holding penthouse and VIP. To do this, you're going to be holding VIP, so make sure that these two walls firstly are reinforced. Once those two walls are reinforced, you're going to reinforce the middle of the bedroom wall right here. Then, you're going to put a rotate as far left on the wall as you possibly can without destroying the dresser in the process. And again, you want to make sure it's very, very skinny and as far to the wall as you possibly can so that nobody on the window can actually shoot it. Then what you're going to do is put head holes next to the mirror just like this. Then, put your mirror down to the right side of the reinforced wall so that you can play off of these head holes if anyone's trying to contest you from this window. This mirror, again, is good for the window, but it's also good if they try to walk in the closet door or if they're rushing Hall of Fame and you want to contest the Hall of Fame door or maybe even to deny a plant over the bed, like, you know, all the way over there, just like that. The only issue with this mirror setup is they can easily destroy it from the hallway, which is why you're going to have these two walls reinforced. This makes it to where they have to squeeze through a doorway in order to shoot your mirror, but even then, they can't actually do that unless they're physically in the hallway, which you'll get a sound cue for, so you can just body block it and get the kill. The next hallway you have to worry about, obviously, is a 90 hallway to your left. You can reinforce the left side just like this to prevent that, and then honestly, I would put head holes next to that reinforcement like this instead of reinforcing- oh, uh, what? Hello? Huh? These head holes allow anybody who's actually sitting in 90 as a defender to contest anybody on the wall, especially if you have that castle strat where this door is castled, this window is castled, that door is castled, you got a prox alarm here, like it's pretty safe to sit in this hallway and do that as long as nobody's pushing the hallway. So these head holes are pretty useful. It also allows you to pressure these doors from an angle that isn't just the mirror angle, and it also makes it to where you can pressure people in 90 if you're inside of VIP. So having head holes here is great. In terms of your second mirror options, people either put mirrors on the left side of this wall or the right side of this wall. Now, you never want to put it on the left side here. That's because you always want to rotate on the left side of this wall instead. The reason you put a rotate on the right side right here and and not the left side right here is because a rotate here is exposed to the window, whereas a rotate here isn't. Now you might be saying, well, a rotate here is exposed to bathroom and hall of fame. Yeah, but so is this rotate, right? So you might as well have a rotate that's not exposed to an extra angle. This rotate also allows you to contest these head holes so that you can shoot people on the wall, and I find I get a lot of free kills doing this. Which means if you want a mirror on either of these walls, you would reinforce this wall, and then you'd put a mirror on it. This allows you to swing off of your door pretty easily and get some free kills. But if you don't want to put a mirror on this wall, you can optionally reinforce this wall and put feet holes next to it just like this, and then put the mirror on this wall too. Either or are good options as long as you have these two walls reinforced, but that's pretty much it for this mirror strat. Moving downstairs to kitchen, you should use this frost strat to hold sunrise and blue bar. For this frost strat, your first frost mat is actually going to go under this little mini bar in sunrise. This is because a lot of tackers, instead of just swinging the door, will go over the mini bar like this, so they don't have to expose themselves to that kitchen door. And then you'll get a free frost mat kill if they do that. Once you've done that, make sure that you make yourself a rotate from Sunrise and Blue Bar because you're actually going to be primarily playing here on the roam. Your next frost mat's going to go on the left side of this Blue Bar door. This is because a lot of people will push from Office to Blue Bar to push you out. And if there's a rotate here, naturally, they're going to just go to the right to avoid the rotate or get behind the bar, in which you'll kill them with a frost mat. Now, for your final frost mat, you have two options. 
If they know you're playing Frost, i.e. you got spotted in the prep phase where they just have good comms, then I wouldn't put it under the kitchen window, because then they're just going to shoot it. But if they don't know, then put it under the kitchen window. But I think this other Frost mat spot is arguably better, because what you're going to do is put a Frost mat spot behind this desk right here. This is because a lot of people will hop over this desk to get cover behind this small window right here to hold the rotate while their teammate plants. So having a frost mat here is a great idea, especially if you bait them with a rotate that's vaultable just like this, so that they think that there's a rotate that they can take control of, and then they can take bathroom control with that rotate. But they don't know that you have a frost mat here, so it's a pretty good mat. Optionally as well, you can put a frost mat behind this window, but I see a lot of people put feet holes here me, myself included. So people will go in reception and just easily shoot this frost mat through the feet holes. So honestly, I just recommend this frost mat because I think it's the best. In terms of actual site setup though, I do recommend having that vaultable rotate. Hell, even if you're not playing frost, just because it makes it to where your people in bathroom can contest the door, they can retake if they're planting from service, but also it makes it to where if, if the attackers want to use the rotate, they have to vault, which locks them in an animation, makes a lot of noise and slows them down. So having a rotate here is just great. Another thing you should do is put feet holes on the right side of this quad wall right here while reinforcing the other two walls. This makes it to where if you ever rotate back to site, you can hold people who are walking in through this hallway or walking in through the uh, the little blue bar door right here, as long as you're, no, you're not prone in front of sunrise, but you get the idea. You can hold feet holes here, rotate to the door, hold the blue bar door, and now anybody in this hallway is just done for. It's a great strategy. The final part of the strategy is your deployable shield. You can just stick it right next to the bomb. It's pretty default, but it definitely works. Now, because you have frost ACOG, whenever you rotate back to site, I definitely recommend getting this little pixel angle right between the bomb and the, uh, the shelf here to hold the service door. It's really, really nice, and you can get a lot of free kills doing it. I know I have. An even more fun strat is this Valkyrie strat for top floor of bank. For your first Valkyrie camera, make your way into loan office. Then you're going to back yourself up onto this little brick wall right here. Then you're going to put your Valkyrie camera out, and you're going to aim it until the guidelines show that your Valkyrie camera is going to land on top of the pillar. You might have to like move forward a little bit for it to work, but you get the idea. Now it's on top of the pillar, so I'm going to throw it. Oh, why is that bad? Now, as you can see on this Valkyrie camera, I can see the majority of lobby, but as an attacker, it's it's like almost impossible to see this camera unless you're really looking for it. And even then, dude, actually, I, I can't see it at all. Wow, that's crazy. That's like almost an invisible Valkyrie camera. As you can see, it's a great spot and it gets most of the same information. The only place it can't really see is the actual staircase, but if you can find a way to throw the Valkyrie camera to where it's like more on the edge, I bet you you can see that too. So that is the first Valkyrie camera. The second Valkyrie camera is going to go above this luggage right here. This makes it to where if anybody's in stock or in the hallway or even on the janitor door, you can see them. So it's overall a great camera that a lot of attackers aren't going to find again unless they're looking right at it. And then the final Valkyrie camera, you're going to prone next to this plant in top square. And then you're going to throw your Valkyrie camera on the actual marble wall, but try to throw it in the plants right about right here as you can see from an attacker's pov like that's really hard to spot it honestly just looks like it's a leaf too but when you get on it you can pretty clearly see most of top square and the top square double door as well as into the hallway so it's still a great valkyrie camera with this camera specifically you can ping right here on the floor and then come all the way down and get a below nitro kill for absolutely free once you're on your camera and you see that they're above your nitro cell even after it explodes, if you don't get the kill, now you have an angle onto the double door just like this. So it's a great strategy for Valkyrie. An even crazier strat is this Fenrir strat for kitchen on cafe. First of all, make sure that you have feet holes along the prep wall on the left side, as well as a reinforcement on the right side. Then put your first Fenrir mine above the double door just like that. Make your way over to the bakery single door and reinforce this. Reinforcing this wall will make it to where nobody can get on this window and shoot through the soft wall while you're sitting in bakery. Your second Fenrir mine is actually going to go below the small bakery table just like this. And yes, this does work on enemy players. I've done it in game. Pair it up with barbed wire. And now if they hop into the window, anybody who's sitting, you know, Harry Potter, coat check, whatever it may be, can easily swing them. Even you in bakery can easily swing them and they won't be able to see you. Your next Fenrir mine is going to go above this double door right here. And then after that, you're going to throw a Fenrir mine on top of this wall right about here. This Fenrir mine actually covers both of the walls and the hatch, and it makes it where the hatch player can't actually shoot it, so it's a great Fenrir mine. And then finally, you can put a Fenrir mine on top of this double door right here, paired with feet holes along this wall. And now if you're in sight and they activate the mine, you can get a free kill through these feet holes. 
Now, in terms of where you'll be playing as Fenrir, you're actually going to be playing inside of Bakery. First of all, you'll know about it. Second of all, they'll be slowed. And third of all, they'll be blind, so you can swing them and kill them for free. Now, because you're playing Bakery, having the small Bakery Fenrir mine activated just makes sense. And then you're going to activate the one above the Whiskey Double Door. This makes it to where if you're in Bakery and they activate it, not only can you be on the Feetals, but you can swing from this door and kill them for free. Once they've taken control of this, or if you're inside of Sight, then you can deactivate that one and activate the one on top of the other Double Door that's on Sight. If they happen to open the White wall you can deactivate that one or deactivate one of these and activate that one it's a great strategy that works as long as you're playing passive and only swinging whenever your mines are activated moving it over to the attack let's talk about this amaru strat for attacking big tower upstairs on oregon first of all in your prep phase get on your drone and get a t2 cam make sure that no one is t3 first of all and then get on your amaru and go in through the big window just like this once you've cleared T3, you've gotten back on your drone, and you've cleared T2 as well. Then, clear Tier 1, make sure no one's down here as well. You're going to hop down, just like this, get on this wall, because they're playing upstairs. You're going to get a hard-reaching charge and open up this reinforced wall right here. Once that's open, send another drone in, just like this. Drone out all of Attic, and if someone's in Attic, then you're going to have to take the gunfight. Get in right here, and just start quick peeking, taking gunfights. If there's head holes here, wait for your teammates to have opened the wall and taken master control, and then it'll be a lot easier for you to take these gunfights. Once you have attic, take the gunfight on the door, quick peek the rotate, then drop all the way over here, quick peek, quick peek, do your thing. But essentially, you've taken attic really, really quickly, and it's just a great Amaru strat to quickly take control of attic, if you notice that no one is holding there. If you still want to Amaru rush the top floor site, but let's say you won last round and you want to surprise him again, all you have to do this time is Amaru into the armory window, if you have a drone in there as well. Then you can come into here, start quick peeking people, maybe even open up a rotate right here, or wait until you're in trophy and open up a rotate right here if it's safe for you to do so, which I doubt it ever will be, or if you don't have a hard reacher, then you can just open up the main wall right here. But either way, you get the idea, there's two windows you can Amaru in from for a solo queue strat if you want to do something a bit more fast paced. An even better attacking strat though is this ram strat for attacking consulate. After using a ram drone to break the window, you're gonna hop in and pick the ram drone up now assuming you have this droned out your first ram device is actually going to go next to the piano right here this ram device will give you all the vert that you need on top of this wall you can even start it from this door right here and curve it to the left if you want to do that this way you'll at least get some vert that you can utilize over here as well for anybody that's on top of the staircase or on the left side of this wall that's really great to do and if any of it gets incomplete you can use your shotgun to complete it your second ram drone is going to go from here all the way to that door with a slight right curvature. This is so that you can get anybody behind the red car. You can get anybody that's on pillar. You can get anybody on the black box, on the rotate. You can get anybody, you know, pipes a little bit too. It's, it's a really great strategy. And then the final ram device is going to go from this corner all the way to that corner, assuming that this hatch is reinforced and your ram device doesn't fall down the hatch like mine might do just now. Hold on, let's see. No, I don't think it will, but you get the idea. Now you have vert on kitchen, on this rotate, you'll have vert onto this hallway, onto these head holes here. It even makes a little bit of head holes right here so you can watch, you know, down the stairs. It's a pretty good angle. And then if you want to get anybody behind pipes, you can reload your shotgun like I'm doing here and get vert right here onto anybody behind the actual pipes. It's a great strategy for you to do. Assuming that somehow you're able to get this hatch open, maybe they didn't reinforce it or your teammates got it open as well, you can smoke off in front of you, smoke off yellow stairs, you know, smoke the headles, whatever it may be, and drop. Or you can rotate to yellow and do the exact same thing. But either way, as long as you play vert here and you get a few kills, you'll be a great help to your team. Moving back to the defense, let's talk about this cap can strat for bottom floor of canal. Your first cap can trap is going to go on the right side of this site door. This makes it to where if they are rushing through tunnel and they try to rush through this door, they'll get hit by a cap can trap. Then, come all the way upstairs, come all the way into the printer office, barricade this door to mute the sound from the drones, and then put two cap can traps on the right side of this door. Then, you can unbarricade the door, and now because you barricaded it, this little leftover sliver of barricade will help cover the cap can traps a little bit. Your final two cap can traps are going to go on the left side of this double door right here. This is because a lot of people know about the cap can spot right here. So once they shoot those, they're not going to expect two more to be on this doorway. Once you're up here and you put your final cap can traps down, make sure that you reinforce this hatch. And if you can as well, make sure that this hatch is also reinforced. 
But that's pretty much it for this strat. It's very simple and straightforward. Something a bit more complicated though is this castle strat for holding kitchen and dining on Oregon. For this castle strat, make sure that you have a rotate for dining and shower. It makes it a lot easier to go from where you're playing to where the teammate needs you to play if you're here. Once you're here, reinforce the right side of this wall with head hills on the left. This allows you to get a tight pixel onto anybody walking in through the door, and it also allows you to get a even longer angle onto anybody inside of small tower through the head holes and this doorway. The only issue is this window here, which you can easily just castle barricade just like this. Your next castle barricade is going to go on the double door right here to small tower. This makes it to where if you're on the heddles and they try to rush your left to get you off of the heddles, they can't do that, and it makes it a lot safer for you to play these heddles I was just talking about. Your next castle is going to go on the white stairs door just like this. When attacking this bomb site, people love to crawl up the white stairs to contest anybody in Z Hall. So having this castled off is great unless they're prone on the doorway, in which you can pretty easily just kill them that way too. Why is the barricade glitched like that anyways? For your final castle barricade, you have two options. You can either castle barricade this window for the exact same reasons that you barricaded that window down there, or you can barricade this double door. Now, the reason some people don't like to do this is it makes it a bit hard for your roamers that don't know how to play around the castle strat. If you're just holding shower and you're not really holding the hallway anyways, castling this off is great. So for the strat, as long as you're playing inside of shower and you're rotating back to site through this rotate or through the hallway because you have this castled, you can pretty easily contest both of the sites fairly easily while having a shower extend that's very, very impactful. This Malusi strat for top floor canal is even easier though. For this strategy, obviously you're going to put a Malusi Banshee on this black box right here. It makes it to where if they want to push up right here, they have to turn all the way around if they want to shoot the Malusi, and then their backs will be exposed to you sitting behind this desk right here to shoot them in the head. You can also hop on top of this desk and put a bulletproof camera next to these monitors as well to watch them in case they break your Malusi Banshee or to shoot any utility that might actually hack your Malusi Banshee. Your next banshee is going to go on top of red stairs right here. This banshee makes it to where if anybody walks in through the doorway here or from top red right here, people on the feet holes will get alerted and people on the doorway will get alerted. So it's more of an alarm system that you can use to get free kills. And then your final Malusi banshee is going to go on the right side of this reinforcement right here. Because you're in solo queue, chances are your teammates aren't good enough to keep this wall closed. So having a Malusi banshee on this wall will make sure that even if it actually gets opened, you'll have information on it when you're playing here so that you can swing and get a free kill. And as you can tell, where you're playing is going to be right here behind the half wall in Skybridge. You can swing off of this banshee and use our bulletproof camera to get any utility trying to destroy this banshee. You can swing off of the other banshee for the wall, and if they decide to go to top red, your teammates on the wall will know about it, or you can rotate to the top of this desk where there's typically holes right here to shoot anybody on top red instead. It's very effective. To do this strat first, you'll want to make the rotates on site for your team. And with the new update, Alibi's DMR, or not DMR, Slug Shock, and you get the idea, has the ACOG, so I definitely recommend trying to run that over the SMG, because, like, Alibi ACOG is just an insane concept, so try that out. But in order to do this strat, make sure that you make your way into rockets, or weapons, whatever you call this room. Then reinforce the single wall here. Once you've done that, take a left, then go into Big Garage, right over here. If you're having trouble finding where these two rooms are, trust me, you're not alone. I've played this map countless times, and I still don't fucking know it. Anyways, what you want to do now is reinforce the two walls here, because you're going to be playing inside of this room. In terms of alibi clones, your first one is going to go behind these two yellow poles and this metal grate right back here. And then you'll put an observation blocker in front of that. Having the alibi clone positioned right here exactly makes it a lot harder for them to be able to like actually ADS and shoot your clone. And because they didn't drone it out in the first place, they'll actually be surprised when they see it and they're more likely to shoot it in the head than in the feet, which makes it to where you can be behind this box right here and swing and kill them for pretty free. The only issue now is that they might push your yellow stairs. So I recommend you break this traffic cone right about here, spread around the debris a bit so that you can fit an alibi clone in the left side of this corner right there. Now, anybody on this staircase here will see that alibi clone first thing when they walk down, or at least a shoulder of it, and if they're smart enough, they'll shoot it, and then you can swing them from the exact same position. If you really want to fool them and distract them on this doorway as well, you can always put an observation blocker in front of it just like this, or you can even throw the alibi clone a little bit farther to the right, just like that, to really make them pay attention to this door before they pay attention to you. Now, at some point, you're going to have to give up Big Garage because if they're coordinated enough, they can get this wall open, they can get this door open, they can get a guy on the staircase, they can get a guy on this window, so you kind of have to back up at some point and then go into this room right here, right in front of the site. Here, you can put your final alibi clone with an observation blocker in front of it just like this. 
and then you can kind of swing off of it depending on where they are to get some free kills. So just making sure that you have your alibi clones near you with observation blockers is the key to this strat. An even better strat is this Azami strat for top floor of Nighthaven Labs. With Azami, make a rotate on the right side of the rafters wall just like this. Then make head holes on the adjacent wall into sight, with a reinforcement on the left side of those head holes right here. Then make sure that your other two rafter walls are reinforced. as well as these two walls right here. In terms of Azami Kiba placements, your first one's going to go on rafters just like this. It gives you a small peephole that you can use to watch anybody who's trying to come through the wall to contest you in rafters. Your second Azami is going to go pretty far right on the wall just like this. This gives you a small hole you can use to watch the door, and if you put it a little bit more to the left than I did, you get an even smaller hole that they can't really contest. Your only worry now is this double wall right here. So you can put an Azami Kiba on the left side of this shelf right here. This gives you cover to use this door if you want to use it to contest the IT double breach right here. Now, a lot of people don't know about the angle that you can get by proning right next to this case right here through the drone hole to shoot anybody's feet who's inside this room trying to get the wall open. So you can use that as cover. But if you're worried about the door right here, your final Azami can go on this case right here. Not only is this keeper great for your prone angle, but it also makes it to where you can cross and not have to worry about this door if you want to use this doorway in between sites. So, as long as you're holding rafters for as long as possible, and then using this rotate to get out, these head holes to contest the door, and this as on the barricade to contest the drone hole, you should be absolutely fine. Moving it back to the attack, let's talk about this gridlock strat for attacking top floor of Outback. For the strat, make sure that you open up the double door here. Then as gridlock, throw your first gridlock track on the right side of this doorway, right about there. These tracks will make it very hard for any defender who's on this side of the map to flank your doorway whenever you're trying to push Picnic. Once you've put gridlocks here, and you've gotten on your drone and make sure that no one's on the shark stairs or close on your door, then you can run in and throw gridlock tracks on the top of shark stairs just like that. Now, they have no possible way they can flank you without you knowing about it. If this wall right here is soft, you can easily open up a rotate on your left side right here. And now you have two different entry points of attack. Then, shoot out this default camera, get back on your drone, and make sure that nobody's sitting inside of piano trying to contest you. Once you've done that, if you have smoke grenades, unlike me, you can smoke off the rotate right there. And then you can throw gridlock tracks deep into this hallway right about there. And then you can tracks off the connector right here. Then, you can plant right about here behind the bomb, then re-smoke your rotate, and now you can easily leave into Picnic and hold off anyone trying to defuse the bomb. It's a very, very easy strat to do. Now for the final strat of the video, you'll be playing Goyo on Dining and Kitchen and Villa. For the strat, reinforce the right side of this wall here. Then with your vector, you can make feet holes all along this wall here. It doesn't even take two mags to do this. It's very, very easy because of how high rate of fire this weapon is. Then, put a Goyo canister in the middle of laundry right here. This Goyo canister is activatable from the door, but more importantly, it's activatable from the feet holes that you just made earlier. Now on Goyo, hopefully you brought impacts, because you're going to make a rotate on the right side of this museum wall right here. Then, you'll reinforce the wall next to it. This allows you to rotate into museum if you need to, without exposing yourself to the door. But also, if you need to back up, you have the reinforcement that can protect you from anybody inside of museum. If you want this rotate to be protected from these walls, then you can easily reinforce them. Once these walls here are reinforced, you're going to put a Goyo on this display case right here. Now, if anyone is really rushing your museum and you don't want to lose access to your rotate in these two walls, you can just pop the Goyo canister and there's fire all around that they can't pass through. Next, make sure that this wall right here is reinforced. Now, it should go without saying that hopefully you aren't doing all of these reinforcements because your teammates know how to set up this site, but just make sure the wall is reinforced because then you're going to barricade this door and put a Goyo canister on this barricade. This makes it to where you don't have to hold pantry at all, and if they try to push pantry, they'll at least give you a 20 second warning by exploding that Goyo canister when they break the barricade. Your final Goyo canister is going to go on the right side of this doorway next to the light switch, just like this. Hopefully as well, you have this wall reinforced. Now, if you're sitting inside of Kitchen, you can easily shoot the Goyo canister without exposing yourself to the door, and delay the rush that's from the bottom of Astro Stairs. With these Goyo canisters, it should be a pretty free round win as long as you're staying in sight and using them to delay anybody that's trying to rush or push the site in general. I don't know how I just missed that twice, by the way. Oh my god, I'm washed. But with that out of the way, my name's Alka. Check out this next video, and I hope we'll see you there. Later.